Okay, I just want to use this example to um, to just sort of explain what I've just been talking about. Sorry, the, 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 the print's a bit small, but I, I hope you can sort of see where I'm trying to go. That's my main aim. So this is your typical layout again of a balance sheet. And you can see here, this balance sheet tells you the date. Again, I mean, the, the, the task here is to fill out these, um, you know, these letters and tell say what they are. This W here, as I said, are your non- current assets and these are examples of non-current assets the building the premises fixtures machinery vehicles and the aim is to add everything together I mean the answer there is 35 they're telling you add all that together and what's the difference 35 so that's 20 25 so a is equal to 10 all so um, if you like your machinery is worth 10 these are all your non-current assets your long-term assets then we have our current assets like and that's this this stock here is your closing inventory what you had at the end of the of the year and then you have debtors is the same thing as trade receivables this is an old question paper but the ideas are the same it's what we call trade receivables so I can cross that out and put trade receivables this stock is, is inventory cross that out you can put inventory these are new names but the key point is this all oh, these are my current assets and all that amounts to 126 and in this example, I mean, you have cash as well, cash in the bank, cash in hand. So these are all examples of current assets. Now, what we see here um, is, is, I'm just extending this argument. We have this Y, which is our current liabilities, which is the bank. We have a bank overdraft, and we have our trade payables, which is this. Okay, so this is really important here. What they are saying here, this is the next stage of this. I mean, I said to you in the first video that, oh, well, we just take all the assets. This is another liability. This is a long-term liability. This is a bank loan, long-term liability. So we have current liabilities and we have long-term liabilities. Ultimately, what are we trying to do? We're trying to ultimately do A minus L. That's where we're trying to go. But what they've done here is they've said, okay, you know what we're going to do first? We're going to deal with these guys first, just the current assets and the current liabilities. And they refer to this business as working capital. Now, what are they saying? They are saying that, okay, of course A minus L is important. But in the short run, in any organization, we want to know that a business can, in the short term, that in the short term, the business has enough money or has enough current assets to transfer into money if need be to pay off its short-term liabilities. I mean, otherwise, it doesn't matter how many buildings you have. If you can't pay your trade payables in the short run, well, you know, you might have to sell your non-current assets. So this is an important equation for investors and for users of accounts to compare the current liabilities with the current assets. I mean, you're, you're, nothing's changed much. It's just the layout. So, if you look at this here, your current liabilities are equal to 49. Your current assets are equal to 126. So they tell you work out this working capital, which is 126 minus 49. So um, 16. That's a seven over there. That's one, and that's and that's um, seven. So, what we have here is we are saying that we, our current assets are greater than our current liabilities by 77. And then the equation, the, the whole thing can continue. We can then, you know, we can then carry on with our A minus L. You know, there's nothing different. We've just sort of done a little bit of in-between here. But we're, we're, we're ultimately trying to get there. So, how it works is, well, if we have this A, if this is, this is the A, we have A, this A, plus there's an A in here minus a little L, so we just add the two together. So this A plus this, and we subtract the final L, if you like. And so that's 10 plus 77, which is 87, minus the 1, which gives you 86. So this, this thing here, if you like, it's called assets employed, but the new name is net assets. Now... Um, this business here, of called what they're calling shares, is really ordinary. Oh, it's, re it's really opening capital. It, I mean, this is just for a business, for um, maybe a, a couple of people who own the business. But the same thing, 
you know, we don't have any drawings in this case, but like I said, this is finance by. So we have the A minus L, and this is your C plus P plus a minus L area. And they're telling, well, if retained profits are 51, if you like, um, and that means that this must have been 35, you know, because this has to be 86, because these two have to be the same. It's because 51 plus 35 together give you 86. So th th this is just an, ex an exercise just to show you the layout. I was more interested in the layout and explaining this idea of what's referred to as working capital. That's an important idea, the difference between capital asset and current assets and current liabilities. Um, so um, watch this video again. Just be comfortable with this idea of what working capital is. And as you do examples, you'll get used to them. But most importantly, get the layout first. You know, and that's something you must be comfortable with. And then you can work out, you can start to work out what working capital is. You can arrive at net assets and you can compare that with the capital, with the capital section. Okay, great stuff. I'll see you in the next video with another example.